everybody. This is a new, relatively new water pick, uh, oral water flocker. The reason these are coming off is because I've took, taken the liberty of removing most of the stuff from this thing because it stopped working. And we've got the guts of the water pick right here, which we're gonna investigate in a moment. But basically, this comes off. It has a bunch of uh, accessories inside, as you can see. The top water reservoir comes off. That's, then you can pry these two parts apart after removing a bunch of screws from here. Okay, and there you have it. Water from the reservoir enters here, enters into the unit, and then gets ejected out of this through here and out the end here. This is basically just a pause, a stop. It doesn't do anything. And then you press this and the tips come out. Okay, but let's have a look at the guts. So inside of the base of the water pick, okay, you can see this is where the water ejects from. There's a little valve over here that allows water to only exit. And there's a pump right here. That pump receives water from the reservoir tank. It enters through here, gets pumped out here. This is the pump here, the motor. And then I guess it shoots it back out of here and then it out, out of there. Okay. The rotary control, which is this for the water pressure is essentially uh, mechanical. It's not, uh, doesn't do anything electrical. It just rotates some component inside of this pump here. <coughs> the, the unit itself, the only electronics in the unit are, is the switch right here, which you can see don't, turns on and off. It goes to this board, which if you look deep down inside, has four diodes, no doubt to rectify the current. From AC into DC, there is a cap, 250 volt, 100 microfarad cap to smoothen things off. And there's the circuit diagram right there. And off, this, the DC goes to the motor, and Bob's your uncle. That's it. That's the entire inside of this unit. You're welcome to reverse engineer this schematic, this board. It's not very hard to do. And there's a large resistor here, which may, in fact, be burned. I'll have to have a look at the value of this. It does feel a little shaky almost like the solder connection is broken. If you look there carefully, is it broken? No, I don't know, something's a little off. Anyway, this thing is dead. No power goes to it. Now I thought, you know, this is a really stupid design for a switch, but basically on the inside of here, the switch is essentially this rocker arm and you can see some gears there as those gears engage this here and move this back and forth. And depending on how this is sitting inside, they don't always grab, the teeth don't always grab this thing. So it could be something as simple as a switch not working, which also could uh, cause this to fail. The other question is, you know, is this resistor okay? Is this cap okay? We're gonna find out. Um, I'm gonna see if I can troubleshoot this and figure out why it's not working at all. It can't be too hard to figure out. There's not much going on here. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so after a bit of tinkering around, we figured out what's going on. It all boils down to this guy right here. There's a fuse. Let's just check the cap here. It's still energized. It was up to 160 volts DC. If I place that there, sorry, this might be the wrong way around, but you can see it's still up there. Okay. 150 or so, you gotta be careful with these guys. The traces lead down to this, which goes to the motor. Once again, if I touch there, I'm getting a nice reading, okay? 
140 or so still left. Remember, I have, this is unplugged at this point. That's just the residual energy on the cap. And if I go here to the motor and I touch here somewhere, then we should be able to see on uh, this crappy thing here. Can you see that? There. Right there. You see? There's 143 going on the motor and dropping. Okay? You wanna basically short out this cap over here. It'd be nice to do it a slow way. You can also do it the fast way, like that, and get a few sparks going here. But now, you should have like a, some kind of a, a bleeder. But anyway, now that it's down, the cap is uh, unenergized, as you can see there. Okay. A few volts. If I plug it in, which I will do now again, I plugged it in, cap is charged, unplugged, see, unplugged, and we go back here, it'll be up in the 160 range. Hold on, see that? And dropping, 150 something volts, okay, DC. Sorry, this thing is a really crappy old multimeter here. Ah, oh, come on, stay, stay. Okay, I'll just have to hold it like this. Hopefully you can see that. up there it's still dropping it's about 140 something now okay okay so being careful not to touch any of this right there if you zoom in here we have our fuse what's it say 2 amp 250 volt um, 2 GP set 115C. So that's a thermal fuse. I guess it's set to to burn out at 115C. And that was nicely tucked in under the motor here. I'll zoom out. Again, without touching it, because remember, this is still connected to the... Okay, so as you can see here, I basically just brought this over to the contact directly on the motor, so it's bypassing the thermal fuse, okay? It's a two amp, 250 volt, set point 115C thermal fuse. And we're gonna plug this in, here we go. As you can see, it has no problem running, okay? As soon as I remove this thing from that contact, to be careful because this capacitor is still live, nothing, see, dead. And uh, yeah, just to show you again, the amount of voltage on this cap. Now I had this thing unplugged the whole night and yet even after all that time, okay, even after all that time, I left this thing unplugged. I came back in the morning and it popped. Okay, here, let me just show you what we're dealing with here on this cap. Do that. It's dropping now. But even dropping, it's still quite high. You have to put something across here to bleed it. Now, I don't know whether 
this is normal if it usually stays charged like this for so long. Whether um, having the motor intact, I mean, it could be that once the fuse goes, the, um, you know, it might be discharging from the motor. There, see? It was still running there. Let's see now. Still have any voltage? I believe I let it run through the motor. Yeah, it's down to nothing. I have to short it to the motor and then it'll bleed the capacitor. We'll get that on here. And that should discharge it. There's only one way, one way to find out. Yeah, it's done. So that's another issue is that if you're gonna repair this thing, you gotta be sure to discharge that cap. And uh, just to summarize then the video, we went ahead and ordered this thermal fuse. Again, just to recap the thermal fuse, I'm gonna zoom in on it a bit more. It is set point 115, here I'll zoom in. 115C H2 GP, 2 amp, 250 volt. And then on the other side, it says T004 PSE, and then some kind of regulatory symbols. It's crimped here, it's connected through a little crimp. Just have to take this off, uncrimp replace the fuse. I don't know how it's connected on the other side. It might be soldered directly to the motor. It looks like straight to here. So that's gonna have to be changed. Not an easily repairable component and certainly not something that warrants failure of a hundred dollar device. I don't know, these things are like 99 bucks. Maybe you'll find them for cheaper, maybe even 50, 60 bucks. But uh, that's a lot of money for something like this. Really, it's basic, there's almost nothing in here. You know, it, electronically, it's, it's ridiculously simple. And all of it boils down to this one part going. And if it does, you're done. This, you cannot change this. And that's apparently just to prevent overheating of the motor. But the problem is this fuse never resets. Once it fails, that's it, it's done. It fails, and then you have to replace it manually. Uh, which if you don't you know, do, uh, know much about electronics and don't wanna get involved in having to hack this thing up, you're, uh, you know, you've just thrown this expensive thing away. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully if you end up with the same problem, you now have a clue about how to fix it perhaps. And uh, there you go, those are the bits. I'm gonna have fun changing this thing at some point and then putting it all together. Again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.